frankincense, one of the gifts given by the three wise men to the newborn Christ. As rare and as precious as gold, its smoke was thought to have divine powers that directly connected man to his God. From its source in Oman, an epic trade route was forged across Arabia to the Holy Lands, where it was shipped throughout the ancient world. And along the way, entire civilizations emerged from the desert and prospered. Now, 5,000 years after the frankincense trade began, I'm following in the footsteps of one of the great epic trade routes of ancient times. My journey started in the mountains of southern Oman at the very beginning of the ancient frankincense route. Here, trees are still tapped for the resin that brought immense wealth to generations of Arab traders. It's like diamonds. With my own supply, I set off on the trail with the Almari tribe, the descendants of the original traders, and crossed from Oman into Yemen, a country divided by tribal conflict. We are going to be number one target for the tribes to kidnap. Despite this constant threat, I entered a world almost unchanged since the days of the frankincense trail. After walking nearly 700 miles across Oman and Yemen, the ancient traders walked north with their camels along the entire length of Saudi Arabia. To follow in their footsteps, I had to prepare to enter one of the most secretive countries on Earth. You're going to have to give me intensive lessons on how to do this. The overland border between Yemen and Saudi Arabia was closed, so I left the frankincense trail and flew to the Saudi capital, Riyadh, where the next part of my journey begins. Only 100 years ago, Riyadh was little more than a village, four or 5,000 people insulated from the world by a vast ocean of sand. Now it's the world center of the oil trade, estimated to make as much as a billion US dollars a day in profit. Up until now, Riyadh, like the rest of Saudi, has been virtually closed off to the non-Muslim world and I'm only allowed to travel accompanied by my official male chaperone, Dawi. Why has Saudi Arabia decided to be more open now? What Saudi Arabia is going to do, they want to change the idea about Islam, about uh, life here. So everybody is welcome to come here and see Saudi Arabia, Saudi people, and our history. To introduce me to modern-day Saudi Arabia, Dawi is taking me to meet a member of the royal family, a prince with a passion for business. And this is his office. He owns the entire building, and from here runs an empire that has made him the richest man in the kingdom. So this is the entrance to the kingdom tower. Can't really see much from the car. It's a staggering building, though. When demand for frankincense was at its height, those trading it became immensely wealthy. Today, I'm meeting a modern-day equivalent, but instead of trading frankincense, he's trading on the stock market. One of the big problems about getting this invitation, which is great to meet Saudi's richest and one of the most influential men in the world, but what do you bring him as a gift? So do you think this is going to be all right as a gift? It's got, it's got frankincense inside it. Ears popping. Thank you. Hello. I am fine, thank you very much. It's an amazing building, but an even more Thanks. amazing office. Yeah, it is actually. And my name's Kate. Rini, I'm to call. Very nice to meet you. Very, very nice, nice to meet, to meet you, too. you. Please have a seat. Okay, thank you. I suddenly feel quite overwhelmed and incredibly frumpy. How unfair is that to be met by a woman not wearing a great big black sack, but a tiny little pencil skirt and perfect heels and enormous amounts of makeup? 
This is the man. And he owns large chunks of all those companies. And even me, with my minimal business brain, has heard of most of those. I'm Sara Liamani from the Corporate Communications Department. I'm the deputy to... It's very the nice to meet you. you. Very well. I'm, well feeling, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, I have to say. Yes, yes, that's how I felt when I first <laughs> really? came here, but every morning as well. And, well, it's, it's it, it, everything, it the scale of everything, but also all of you are so glamorous, and I'm feeling a little bit kind of underdressed. Well, you can take your abaye off if can you I? like, yes. And yes. is there a proper form of address? Do I need to call him Your Royal Highness? Or? Of course, of course. I mean, he is... His, he, his title is His Royal Highness Prince okay. Edward so, Okay. Yeah. I mean, he sounds, from what I've read, he sounds absolutely fascinating, but quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to be scared. Sure. <laughs> and finally, I meet His Royal Highness Prince Al Walid bin Talal. Gosh, there's more cameras in here than there are outside. Hello. This is Kate Humble. Your Royal Highness, very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My every action is being recorded by Prince Al Walid's personal TV crew, which documents every minute of his public life. Um, can I, can I, before we start, can I give you this? Yes, thank you. Inside there is some frankincense that we collected in Oman. Thank you. Oman, huh? I believe you're the grandson of the founder of Saudi Arabia, is yes. that right? Yes. King Abdulaziz, yes. I'm, I'm amazed that you bother to work. I think, uh... Uh, every person has to work. It's part of our uh, religion, part of our ethics, part of our habits is to work. I mean, every person has to work and uh, produce. You've amassed um, a huge fortune. Are, are you the richest man in the world? No? No. Not the, quite. No, I, I'm among those, thanks you're God. Am, you're among them. Yeah. Um, is there such a thing as too much money? Well, you know, really, it's... Uh, you know, once you, uh, you go beyond a stage, uh, it becomes academic because there is only so much you can do with, with the wealth. Mm. But more importantly is what, how you can apply your wealth to help society and plow back part of it to the system and advance certain causes that you believe in. Ah, yes. The meeting over, I'm unexpectedly asked to join the prince for the evening. What? He has a full-time staff of bodyguards and a convoy of vehicles that accompany him wherever he goes. I've been told we're going to head to the desert to attend a tribal gathering, but first we're going to pick up his wife, the princess, from his personal resort at the edge of the city. I feel like I'm in a Bond film. What do you mean unsecure? We're in a cavalcade of these what very the kind of threatening-looking cars. I don't know whether they're bulletproof, but you suspect they are. And well, I want to ask him, but at the moment he's clinching some multi-million pound deal, I think. There's lots of big numbers being planted about. And are you constantly looking for new companies to invest in? Oh, yes. Always looking, especially in these days, the good opportunities. Do you work very much on your own instincts? I have to involve the investment committee. Yeah. And I like second opinion, always. Yeah. And I always tell my people working with me, you, in your particular position, you have to be better than me. But you seem to be able to make decisions instantly. Immediately. Really? Immediately. Don't you ever have times where you just think, I, I don't know what to do? Sure, no, 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 no. I, if there's a decision for, uh, that needs some time in meditation, I do it. I take mm. my time in the desert, for sure. But some decision I'd have to be taken immediately. And you, can, you have absolute confidence yes, that you can do sure. that? I just took a decision right now. And we're going to have a conference call right now based on that. It turns out the prince was completing a deal to refinance America's biggest bank, Citibank. Fifteen minutes later, we arrive at Prince Al Walid's city resort. Overlooking Riyadh, it's the size of 40 football pitches. He doesn't live here. It's more like a private playground. Reem, one of the prince's assistants, shows me around. It's described as a resort, but it's just for him and his family? It's uh, for him, his family, any guests uh, coming from uh, all over the companies, presidents and... Uh, many visitors from His Highness uh, that he invites them always. And, and does he sleep here? Does he have a house here? Or is it um, just a kind of recreational...? There are some indoors facilities for His Highness, but it uh, depends on... Sometimes he spends the weekend 